Hello, welcome to painting with Jasmine Rempel Art. I'm Jasmine and today I'm going to paint a calla lily. Um, I'm going to start with a sketch and then move on to adding watercolors. For the supplies I'm using, have a look at the description to my video and you'll find details of each supply I'm using. I'll also tell you what I'm reaching for as I go along. So let's get started with the sketch for the calla lily. Starting with just a simple graphite pencil and my gummy eraser. Okay, I actually already have a very light sketch on here, but I'm just going to go over it darker for you to see. Um, I'm going to start with a simple U-shape. And then I'm going to add a stem. I'm working on Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. This is actually an art cart, an art card. I order these from Amazon. Yeah, they're five by seven inches. All right, I've got the U, I've got a stem, and what I'm going to do now is to begin to um, add, I'm not sure if it's a petal, it's calla lilies really seem to have one big wraparound petal, so that's what I'm going to do here. Starting with a curve up in the U shape. I'm going to join it right over here and then bring it around nice and wide up near the top, bringing it down into a point. And I'm coming back right into this area and curving down towards this line, going back up and touching that point. Bringing another curve up and another one this way. Then I'll just draw a little curl around here. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm going to just, that should do it. With this little curve around, I'm going to basically follow the same curve and so that I have it, it's a little thicker there. In the center area, we'll have that upside down U shape. This is basically the shape of the calla lily that I will follow today. It's a very simple shape. I do spend time sketching calla lilies and I have a variety sketched out for other art cards. I have one here, one here, and there's many more. So I'm trying to keep it simple today for the sake of this tutorial. Now I'm going to erase this little line And that's good. When the painting is done, I will also add a leaf in this area here, but for now I won't draw it. We'll just start painting. Now, what I generally tend to do when I'm doing um, a painting is I, will, I won't leave the graphite this dark. Um, for the sake of the tutorial, so you can see well, I will leave it this dark, but generally what I would do is I would just go with my kneadable eraser and I would lift off a lot of this graphite. Or when I sketched it, I would not be sketching it quite so dark. Okay, here goes. So for paints, I'm using Winsor Newton watercolor paints. I actually have a whole palette here ready to go. And I'll just be using a few colors from this palette. I'm reaching for my number, I think I'll start with my number four round, 
brush. Actually, let's see, I'll switch to my number six. This is silver black velvet and it's a round brush. I have already reached for one color. This is lemon yellow and I have a little bit on my palette. I'm going to be using lemon yellow. I'm going to be using permanent rose. And lemon yellow, permanent rose, and sap green to start. So I'll get each of these ready for you to see. And I'm going to be starting with the wet on wet technique. So here goes. Taking a wet brush and applying water to this area right here. Staying within my lines. I have my card on a board so that I can lift it as I need to. When I am putting the water on, um, I often will lift the board so that I can see the sheen and it helps me know where I need more water. The water will stay right within the edges that I place it unless I have too much water and then it might run out. So it's a balancing act with wet on wet of not having too little water and not having too much. If there's too little, it will dry quickly. If there's too much, it might run out of your borders and uh, it can create these big pools that dry um, at different times. So then it will create what we call blooms so I'm wanting my paper saturated, but I don't want it super soggy. It takes practice to learn what you want. So don't be frustrated or um, impatient with yourself if you don't get it the first few times. All right, so you can see there that there's a nice sheen I'm ready to reach into my colors. I am going to be using yellow in the center, pink up on the top, and green down below, and then they'll blend together. So I'm starting with my Windsor yellow, and I'll just tap it into the center and let it bleed. And I'm even going to bring some down into the stem. Next, I'm reaching for my permanent rose and I'm going to tap it up top here and it is basically going to bleed down. I'm lift. Oh, I don't want it to go too far. So I am getting a dry brush and I'm going to lift that up. I've taken my brush, dried it off, and it's thirsty brush is going to drink some of that up. I do want this to bleed down in, but not a big long strip. I want it to kind of go all together. So bleeding is basically when the pigment follows the water path. And right now it's moving into the yellowed area, which I want to happen. And I'll even encourage a little bit of it to come down in lines. There we go. Now I'm reaching for the green, sap green, and I'm just going to tap some into this bottom area. And into this stem. I'm encouraging it down with my brush. It's drying at the bottom so I'm wanting to work quickly to fill in that color in there. I'm leaving a little bit of that yellow on the edge purposely 
and I'm pers purposefully and I might even add a little more there. Okay, I can see that I've got a bleed of green moving upwards and I like that. I'm actually tilting my board so that it will go even more. I've got some pink in the yellow, some green in the yellow and that is lovely. I will leave it at that. How pretty is that? Now I'm actually going into another green color. This is going to be, this is a cobalt deep green and you can see that it's a lot more cool than my other green and I'm going to tap that right into this area of the stem. To create a little bit of a shadow color, quite a strong shadow color as we can see. So I've cleaned off my brush and I'm going to encourage it a little bit to move down the stem. All right, I'm okay with that. And I'm tilting. I'm tilting my board so that this, this green will run a little bit to the left. Taking a little more on my brush, bringing it down a little more. When my voice gets quieter, I apologize. It just means I am thinking, concentrating on what I'm doing here. I'm tapping in this dark, darker green gently. There, that's good. I'll stop now. I do not want to fuss too much with this. I'll let that dry. While it's drying, I'll work on some areas that aren't close to it. I don't want to work here or here because if I do and I get this wet, the wet here and the wet here could potentially mix together and create um, a bit of a mess or a bloom. Okay, so this is going to be, uh, my light is going to come from this side. So I'm wanting basically this flipped petal area, this will be in shadow right here. So I'm going to take, um, make this a bit of a shadow color of pink. So I've got some pink and actually what I'm doing right now is I'm reaching into my alizarin crimson and it is a very cool red color and I'm going to take some of the permanent rose and put it right in that alizarin crimson. Then I want a smaller brush. I think that probably this number two round, same brand, silver black velvet, I'll use. So I'm just going to wet this tiny little area with my brush. And I'll reach into that darker pink red color and just tap it in. Oh. How nice is that? Okay. Um, I actually took some time to blow dry this area with my hair dryer and I'm going to begin to work in this area now. I'm reaching again for my number six and again I'll get this area wet and use a nice wet and wet effect so I get these lovely blends. Now this is much lighter than I want it to be and that's okay it's the first wash We'll put some darks over that in a bit. Okay. Turning so that I can see where I need more water. Looking for that sheen that helps me out.
Okay, good. There's that lovely sheen. Not too wet. Making sure I've got all my spots and that it's staying damp. Okay, similar to what I did here, I'm going to do here. Reaching from my yellow to start, bringing that into the center area. And all the way into the bottom. Grabbing some of that permanent rose. And I'm actually going to water it down a little more because I want it lighter on this side. Tapping in that more set, um, more diluted permanent rose. Diluted, it has more water in it than pigment. Good. Tapping that in. It's just at the yellow now. And I'm just going to tilt my board and let it run down into that yellow. It's probably good right there. And into that nice sap green. I cleaned off my brush first, of course, and tap that in. Bring it up the side a little. Good. Clean off my brush. Dry it a little. Oh, maybe I dried it too much. I want more. I've just reached for more sap green. Okay. Tilt my board. Let it run. Here, let's make sure you can see that well. That's probably good. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay. We've got some nice run lines. Um, okay, so I can just see a, some white on the edge here that I don't want. And I think I'll just put a bit of green. Being careful now, I want to work fairly quickly as it starts to dry. I'm not going to be able to work with it much longer. That's good. All right, that needs to dry and I can work in this area. And I'm just going to make that a light pink. Again, wet. Good. Reaching into my pink. Permanent rose. And it's bleeding out. Nice. Super. Let that dry. I'm going to do this little, little, um, whatever it is, <laughs> little curve. Um, for this, actually, it's going to be green. A little bit of sap green on my brush. And I'm using a wet brush with wet pigment on a dry paper. So this is going to be called not wet on wet, but wet on dry. And I'm just drawing in this little sweet little turn of the calla lily. And it's good for now. All right. Now I want to start working in here, but it's this is wet, so I'm actually going to blow dry right now. Okay, so that's dry now, and I'm reaching for a bigger brush. I'm reaching for my number eight silver black velvet round brush. 
I'm going to get this entire area wet, not the little center. I think that's called the stamen, not the little center stamen though. I have to save that. I'm getting it quite wet. Because it's a bigger area, um, I want it to stay wet for a fairly long time while I work in here with the wet and wet effects. So I'm adding a fair amount of water. To turn that, and look for my sheen so I know where I'm going and what still needs to be made wet. Such a peaceful process doing watercolor especially using these lovely pastel colors. It is now, um, what is it, March? It's March, early March. We just had our time, um, our daylight savings last night. So we're heading into spring, my favorite season. And um, I just feel so happy when I'm painting flowers and the spring has come. I spent a very long time painting uh, snow people and snowflakes um, during January and February and December and even November. So it's nice to move on to something bright and cheerful. Not that snow isn't cheerful. It actually is fun to work with snow and watercolors. Just can get some beautiful effects with salt. If you want to see some of my snow people, look look on my YouTube channel and you'll see some of the happy little snow families I enjoyed making and others enjoyed making along with me. All right, I that feels nice and wet. Great. Okay, so for this, I'm wanting darker around here and then I'm going to let it lighten out as it goes up near the top. I might put a dark rim as well. Okay so I'm going to need some permanent robes and I'm going to need some alizarin crimson. And this time I want a little bit of ultramarine. This is French ultramarine blue. Okay, so ultimately I'm going to mix some of this permanent rose into the alizarin crimson. And I'm going to take some of this blue and put it right in there as well. And I have a deep, a deep value there. So I'm going to turn, turn this around upside down. And I've got this deeper value and I'm going to start here by tapping this in. And ultimately it's going to start running down the paper, which is just what I want. Good. Just picking up some of this little puddle that's building on the edge here with a dry brush. Okay, so now I'm going into just my pink. I'm just going to pull that out around here, little strips. Pretty. And then I have a, I've cleaned my brush and it's just a wet brush. I'm just going to pull that around and let that pink run. 
and I'm going to pull these together a little bit. Right now I'm just waiting, letting the color do what it's doing. I'm just kind of watching it. Okay, I've got this darker color value again. And I'm just taking, oh, I'm running out. I just, okay, I've got this darker value again. Alizarin Crimson, bit of the blue, bit of the pink. I'm just going to tap it into the top here in some areas. Nice. Bring it around. And then I'm going to create some curved lines. ran together a bit and that's okay. Everything's okay. The thing about wet and wet is you can't always control what's happening and sometimes you just have to let go and see what happens going to end up filling in this area. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And I'm going to fill in. Actually, that's an interesting little pattern in there. So I'm going to leave that. All right, now, don't worry if yours isn't turning out exactly like mine. It will not. <laughs> I'm lifting a line. And the way I did that was I have a dry brush and I am running that dry brush along the wet pigment and it lifts that pigment. And then it'll create a faint line, a faint white line. And I'm making these lines go towards this point in a curve. Nice. Just adds a little extra touch. Very pretty. Okay, let's let that dry. And while it's drying, we're going to add a little some shadow in here and a few lines. And to do that, I'm reaching for my number four and I am going to just run water. I have water on my brush and I'm drawing that water, pulling it with the side of my brush. So there's this nice thick damp area happening. I say damp because I don't want a huge puddle, but I want it saturated along this curve. Okay. And I brought it out even further. And I am going into my alizarin crimson with some of the blue. And I've got this nice purple here. Well, more of a maroon or a burgundy. I'm just going to tap that along the edge where I just ran my water. I have to go pretty quick. If it doesn't bleed out, it means it's not wet anymore and it needs to be wet for this to work. So I am adding more water here. Okay, 
tapping. Good. That's working. Creating this nice shadow. Good. Perfect. Boy, that just looks great. All right, let's get this darker too. I'm just grabbing the same color I had, the maroon color from Alizarin Crimson and Permanent Rose. And with Wet on Dry, I'm just going to put that color right into here. There's so much more I could do, but I'm trying to not, I don't want this um, tutorial to be too complicated. So I'm going to think about finishing this. Um, and so I'm going to create a few little lines here. And I've got a lizard and crimson. I've got some of that permanent rose. And I'm going to use these. These two colors mixed, combined. And right now I have a zero brush. And I'm going to create some broken lines down along here. Good. And I want it lighter in color, more faded for this side. And again, a few lines along here. Just a little bit. Take that same color, do the same. Just creates this lovely movement. Okay. I'm going to get this wet just with water in this area, not the whole thing, just a little, just a portion of it, and go into my Elizabeth and Crimson. Permanent rose, and I'm just going to add a little bit of that here. And let it bleed out a bit. And clean my brush and just pull that along a little bit. It gives it an effect of being um lighter here darker here creates more value okay this area is dry now i'm going to work here I'm going into my actually i'm going to wet it first into my straight Windsor yellow and then I'm going to paint the whole thing in Windsor yellow and then add a little shadow to a portion of it for the shadow I'm wanting a bit of blue into here so I've got a basically a purple and I'm going to add that into my Windsor yellow. And then I've got Windsor yellow with a little bit of that purpley color. And that's what makes the shadow just on the right side. I'm leaving the left, top left side. Um, 
with that pure color, the pure Windsor yellow. And that way it gives kind of a highlight. How pretty. All right. I think now we will do a leaf and then call this a nice simple calla lily. Um, for the leaf, let's get, I'm going to just do a very simple one. Start with the middle line. Calla lily leaves tend to be curved. So curve that, curve that. And I'm going for my a large brush here. Again, number eight brush. I need to get this nice and wet. Of course, you can look at images of leaves, calla lily leaves, and draw any type of leaf shape you desire. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. Starting in my yellow, Windsor yellow. I'm just going to apply some of that here. I'm just going to be a bit loosey goosey. And then my sap green here and there filling it in it's nice and wet still Okay, and now I'm going to my cobalt deep green. Put some in this little corner. Make it look like I've got, I'll show you in a minute, I'm gonna end up doing a curved leaf here. And with that nice cobalt deep green, I'm also just going to carry it down the center. And in a few areas with it. I'm not going to have this leaf look hugely realistic. Okay, I don't mind that. All right, so what I was doing, I'm at, I'll draw it for you. I decided I'm going to have a curved part coming in like that. Once this is dry, I'll make that a light green. And here, I'll make this a dark green. So I'm going to dry it. Actually, before I do, sorry, I've decided to do some lifting, similar as I did here to create a few white lines. Dry brush, lift, dry brush, lift, it's giving me a few vein highlights. Lift, and maybe another, a couple more, there you go. This one perhaps is a little darker than I want, lighter than I want. I'll just run a green along with it. All right. Still lifting here and there along the center. All right, I want this to dry. And I've just blow dried it. Okay, so I've got my Windsor yellow with a bit of that cobalt green. And I will just apply that here with um, wet on dry technique. Good. 
it. And then on the other side, I'll use this darker green, mix it with the sap green, and again, wet on dry. Want to make sure it's wet enough that the paint actually moves. Drawing in that shadow color. Make it look like it was a nice big fold here. Like that. I'm all about curbs. I like very lyrical designs, curvilinear. Aw, that's so pretty. Last thing I want to do is add one more shadow. So I'm getting this wet right under this lip, lip um, curve of the petal. And I want that um, shadow color, the alizarin crimson, with the French ultramarine, a bit of the permanent rose. And I'm just going to tap that in here. Super. Now I'll sign this. I like so many ways to sign your piece. I like to use a rigger brush. And I think I'll do this in green. I just tend to put my initials. JR. Now I have a nice card for someone. Beautiful birthday card. Get well card. Could be any kind of card. Let's lift off the tape. I taped this down, taped this down so that I could work on this board and also sometimes watercolor paper will buckle or create bumps while you're working with it and so it's just easier to have it flat on a surface. All right, there we go. Here is a lovely little calla lily art card thank you so much for joining me today i hope you enjoyed this process um if you want to see more of my videos please subscribe i'd love to have you join my channel um put a like on the video leave a comment i'm new to tutorials so i'd love feedback if you have anything you'd like to let me know after watching this please leave me a comment i'd always appreciate to hear from you you can look in my description and find um, some links to find my art on Instagram or my website. Enjoy painting. Bye for now.